butterflies and moths. There's over 180,000 species that occur right the way around the world. And they're amongst the most beautiful of all insects. They have wings covered in tiny scales that in some cases are packed with pigments to produce intricate and colorful patterns. In other cases, the scales have minute ridges that reflect light of certain colors to create iridescent greens and blues. They've captured people's interest for hundreds of years, especially during the 19th century, when Victorian explorers would set out to the most remote jungles in the world to net the rarest of specimens. Many people don't know the difference between butterflies and moths. Generally, but not always, moths have feathery antennae, and usually, but again, not always, they fly at night. Whereas butterflies often have narrow clubbed antennae and generally fly during the daytime. These are two of the largest and most beautiful moths in the world. This is the Madagascan comet moth. This is a male, and I know it's a male because the antennae are much broader and more feathery. They use them to, to sense the, the females and find them. And he has beautiful eye spots which are used to deter predators. They fool a predator into thinking that the moth is actually a bigger animal. Many moths and butterflies use eye spots for defense that are often very realistic. With colored irises, black pupils, and even a white reflected catchlight, just as real eyes have. And then this atlas moth. The atlas moths are the biggest moths of all. The largest species can have wingspans over 30 centimeters or a foot across. And these are interesting because the sides of the wings mimic snakes. This is said to be like a snake's head to make it fearsome to predators. All butterflies and moths start off life as tiny eggs generally laid on leaves. Here's some here. The eggs then hatch and turn into tiny baby caterpillars which munch away at the leaves and slowly grow over the course of a few months. You can keep many, many species of moth and butterfly caterpillars at home, including many spectacular tropical species. But many of the easiest are actually the species that you can find in your back garden, native to your environment. These are cream spot tiger moths. They occur widely across Europe, and they're very easy to keep on bramble. They munch away and slowly grow over, over a few months. As with all moth and butterfly caterpillars, all you really need is a tank, like this one here, a little container, and the food plants they like to munch on. You need to then put everything in the tank and just make sure you change the leaves every few days, every two or three days, and keep them fresh. And the caterpillars will slowly grow over a course of a few months and eventually pupate. Quite interestingly, when you look at the caterpillars, this species is covered in long hairs, and many moth and butterfly caterpillars are similarly hairy, and in many cases, the hairs are irritant. It's a defense mechanism because these large, fat caterpillars would make a really tasty mouthful for any hungry birds or other predators. Other species, such as this one over here, which is the caterpillar of the monarch butterfly, this uses a completely different form of defense. Instead of hairs, its caterpillars are really brightly colored, they're colored in stripes. And that is a defense mechanism that shows any potential predators that this is a very poisonous caterpillar. They actually absorb the poison from the, the milkweed plant upon which they feed, and they concentrate the poisons in their tissues. When the caterpillars reach their full size, inevitably they turn into pupae. 
and the miracle of metamorphosis begins. Moths often form these beautiful cocoons made of silk. These are the cocoons of the Atlas moth and the Madagascan comet moth. And they're intricately woven with such elegant and beautiful threads of silk. This one is golden silk and this is oh, shiny silver. They're so beautiful structures. These, both of these have actually hatched and so I can open them without hurting the pupae inside. And you can see the, the empty pupae from which the moths have emerged. You can buy these often from your local butterfly farm, from sources that are sustainably and, and ethically reared. And these are a great way to start your moth colonies. Once you've acquired your, your pupae, or, or in this case your cocoons, you can just bend open a paper clip and then attach them on the inside of a net cage like this. And depending on the species and the time of year, you'll have to wait a few weeks or, or months for them to emerge. And then you'll eventually get your spectacular adult moths. Depending upon the species, they will mate in captivity, produce eggs, and the whole cycle will then repeat all over again. For more information, please visit the Weird and Wonderful Pets website, where you can download information PDFs and secure your copy of the accompanying book.